going on. It's like grandparents bring your grandkids to church Sunday. I've seen an early service now at 930, like mom and dad maybe have a weekend uh, getaway and the grandkids are here. So welcome. We're so glad that you are here as well. If you want to connect with us for the first time and maybe, uh, you know, connect with St. John, Jesus, get some questions answered you might have, you can simply text the word connect to 833-440-0137. Or if you're here in person, you can do it the old-fashioned way and fill out a piece of paper at the connection counter in the back. And after that, uh, we will then uh, send you some information, answer any questions you might have. But the cool thing is you'll get a gift bag and uh, has barbecue sauce, all sorts of good stuff in it. But we'll also, uh, on your behalf, with your name uh, connected to it, we will send $10 to the Mansfield Mission Center a great organization in town that we partner with to help people that are in need. So we're so glad that you're here and want to help you connect in any way that you can. Speak of connecting, this is your second week opportunity to connect in a grilling group. And if you're new here, basically this is an opportunity in a big church to get to know a few people, a few families, have some great, probably good barbecue and get around God's word. I got to tell you, A guy and his wife signed up last week, and I heard they're amazing uh, barbecue masters. So they're just waiting for a whole group of people to come visit them and do study with them. So if you sign up, maybe uh, you'll get put in their group. But we need more leaders, more hosts. If you would like, if God's moving in your heart to do that, make sure you sign up here. I'll do training with some great food a week from this coming Tuesday. If you are going to lead, you're not doing it by yourself, I'll be there to help you as well. So anyway, check this out. It's a short-term commitment, but long-term opportunities for you to get to know Jesus better and others as well. If you would like to continue to sow into the ministry here to give back to God as he has so richly blessed you, you can give your uh, tithe or offering either in person. Uh, The plates are in back after the service in the lobby area, or you can give online. Just go to stjohnmansfield.org and many ways there that you can give. And I just want to say thank you for uh, sowing into the ministry as we're able to do so much uh, with that as well. As we get ready for today's topic of unnamed, today we're talking about uh, worthy or unworthy. And the aspect of that word worthy or unworthy, there's, there's a lot to unpack there that we're going to talk about today. But part of it is having worth, right? How valuable are you? How w- much worth do you have uh, before somebody else or even to yourself? There's a lot that you can do with that there. But I started thinking when I thought of worthy uh, of actually right after a human being sinned in the Garden of Eden. And God had this response like, man, things are broken. And in Genesis Chapter 3, verse 19, God says this. He says, by the sweat of your brow, you will eat your, your food until you return to the ground. Since from it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you will return. I'm thinking, man, that's not super valuable. And I started thinking, you know, like, there, I've seen this in a movie before where there is like this, this almighty, his name is Thanos, and, uh, and he's trying to collect all these rings. And once he gets it, he's going to like, here's a picture right here. He literally can start turning people into dust. If you haven't seen this Marvel movie, it's called Endgames. It came out a couple years ago. But it's really interesting because all of a sudden at the end of the movie, you see all these people turning into dust. Right? I'm like, this, so this guy who collects all these goofy rings, all this powerful stuff, yeah, he's playing God. And he decides who is going to turn back into dust or who isn't, right? So he's thinking he's all that, and these people are worthless. I don't want you to mistake that with your God, with the God of all creation, the one who loves you, the one who sent his son Jesus. Because listen to what God said just a few verses before, how valuable you are. In verse 15, he says this, I will put enmity, that's uh, between you and the woman, and he's talking at that time between Satan and the woman, And between you, Satan, and her offspring, he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. If you look at this closely, this is the first mention of the gospel, the good news that God's going to do something by sending his son, Jesus. And it's where Jesus will crush the head of Satan, and that is done on the cross. And I know that each one of us wants to be a part of that that this is something that God has done for you, that 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 is what makes you worthy and of value in God's eyes. In fact, we can go a little further and say that God promised so long ago his son 
because you are worth so much to him. And the way that we receive the gift of the cross and, and, and that, that value is by giving what's basically worthless in us and it's our sins. It's our guilt and our shame. We just lay that at the foot of the cross today. Anything that's burdening you, give it to God and he will fill you with his worth and make you worthy before him. Let us pray. Father, we come before you right now and uh, we just pause, Lord, to confess our sins that we have committed in thought, in word, in, in, in action, and lo- those things that we, we knew we should have done and we didn't. We just pause right now and we silently confess before you. Father, thank you that you don't just like turn us into dust and leave us in the grave forever, but uh, you sent your son, Jesus. And Lord, as he defeated death, Lord, he rose from the grave. He conquered, Lord, uh, all uh, that the devil had, that he intended, Lord, bad on our part. And God, because Jesus lives and and you have given us, Lord, a faith, and we just cry out, Lord, and, and ask you, forgive us again, forgive us once more. And God, we know that you have, we know that you restore us, and we know, Lord, that you are giving us, Lord, that gift of eternal life to see you someday face to face. But in the meantime, while we're still on this earth, let us be assured that our sins are forgiven, our value is in you, and Lord, you are the one that makes us worthy to come before your throne. We're so valuable to you. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Amen. We praise God because we are no longer slaves to our sin. Please stand.
Kelly Carver, and it's my privilege to read the scripture this morning, which is from the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verses 5 through 13. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, truly, I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go, let it be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that moment. This is the word of the Lord. Please be seated. In today's society, we hear a lot about heroes. But what does a hero look like? What does a hero do? Heroes aren't always the ones that make the greatest splash. They are all around doing amazing work, while sometimes flying under the radar. We find plenty of these in the Bible. So let's celebrate those that don't get all the fame, yet fulfill God's given roles in the world. We like to call them the unnamed heroes. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time together, and we simply ask that as we open your word that your Holy Spirit would reveal, Lord, what's in our hearts and what needs to be in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'd like to follow along in the Bible today, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 8, starting in verse 5. Uh, you can also follow us along on the Version app. There's directions right at the bottom there. All the answers are already there, so that's kind of easy and, uh, and really smooth way to do it as well. Well, as I was getting ready for this message about a month ago, thinking, you know, we had the unnamed sermon series, and we're thinking, okay, these are people who are in the Bible, who play an amazing role in maybe just teaching us about not only God's kingdom, but faith in general. And then we have the different topics, such as, you know, unclean, unpolished, you name it, and we get to unworthy. And I think I wrote the message, and then the next morning, God gave me an illustration right here. Here's what happened. I live about an hour from St. John, so whether I'm driving here to St. John or to Cisco, one of our uh, strategic partner churches, it's a, it's a drive for me. And I don't mind the drive, but I am conscious of how I look when I get there after the drive. You know, if the drive is over like 15 minutes, your clothes get wrinkled. So what I do is I will get dressed and I will put everything on except my outer shirt. Now, underneath, I have, you know, like back in the days, we'd have these old Hanes white T-shirts. But instead, I wear one of these, like, you know, Under Armour tight, really tight, hopefully girdle tight, you know, making me a little smaller from the COVID-15 here. And they're, they're, it's a really revealing dry wick shirt. It's one of those that you, you wouldn't let somebody, like, I wore it well when I was 18, but not so much now. So I hang my nice dress shirt behind me. And then when I get there, I put it on. It's not wrinkled from the seatbelt. You name it. It works great most days. Well, this time there was a problem. And I was about 15 minutes from the house coming down 35. And I I noticed I needed some gas. Uh, My wife and I had switched vehicles. Usually I'd take the forerunner, but this time I was in the Jeep and they lock a little differently. (laughs) So I'm actually talking to my small group guys and we're getting, we're getting ready to pray in a little bit, you know, while I'm driving with my eyes open, of course. And I, ha- I locked the car because I had the computer, iPad, you name it, of the front seat. And I'm like one of these guys hearing these stories like, hey, people now when you're getting gas, they'll sneak in and take your stuff, you know? So I lock it and I'll leave the keys in there. I leave my phone in there. I'm just talking on the, you know, 
And I'm halfway through getting gas. Who knows why I did this? I shut the door. Like, oh no. And all of a sudden I start freaking out. The guys are talking like, guys, 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 hold on. I got something important going on here. I said, the keys are in the car. It's locked. My phone is in there. I can't call my wife. And I'm standing out here in this tight, goofy, messed up shirt. And it's all these people around. I'm like, oh man, I feel so awkward. Man, this is 6.30 in the morning. So I'm thinking to myself, how am I going to contact my wife? That, figure that out. Have my watch right here. Call her, call her twice. And hey, I'm sorry. Can you come get me and unlock the car? And, but I remember thinking, I have no way going inside that store. Everybody's all dressed up. They look nice. They're ready for the day. And I got this tight, nasty shirt. Shows everything. And then I'm like, what am I going to do? I don't think that it'd be nice. Oh, why don't you just act like you're pumping gas for 20 minutes, right? I stand in the, in the island in the middle there thinking, everybody thinks I'm a freak. What if I stand here with this shirt just looking at them for? Like, what do I do? I felt so nervous. But most importantly, as I, as I dissected the situation, I felt unworthy because of my shirt or lack thereof. I, I wouldn't even go inside, right? Because I felt unworthy. I wasn't dressed as nice as the other people. I was looking rather odd that day and it made me internally feel unworthy and act on it externally. Now that's pretty shallow. But I wonder, I wonder how often we actually allow that type of thinking to really rule our lives. How often do we make decisions where we're not going to go to a certain place? We're not going to hang with a certain group. We're not.